So as a result, the human side of the Islamic and, and especially Arabic world are rarely to be found. Uh, and, and the net result is this vacancy on the one hand and these easy, almost automatic images of terror and violence. There is a handy set of images and cliches, you know, not just from the newspapers and the television, but from movies. I come from a land, from a faraway place, where the caravan camels roam. Where it's flat and immense and the heat is intense. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. When the winds from the east and the suns from the west and the sand and the glass is bright, come on down, stop on by, hop a carpet and fly to another Arabian night. I mean, I, I, mean, I myself, growing up in the Middle East in Palestine and Cairo, used to delight in films on the Arabian Nights, you know, done by Hollywood producers, you know, with John Hall and Maria Montez and Sabu. I mean, they were talking about a part of the world that I lived in, but it had this kind of exotic, uh, magical quality, which was w w what we call today Hollywood. So there was that whole repertory of the sheiks and the desert and the galloping around and the scimitars and the dancing girls and all that. that was, that's really the material. The situation in the popular media is, is basically that Muslims are really two things. One, they're villains of one sort, villains and fanatics. I will dispatch the American people to the hell they deserve. And B, many films end up with huge numbers of bodies, Muslim bodies, strewn all over the place, the result of Arnold Schwarzenegger or Demi Moore, Chuck Norris, Lots of films about guerrillas going in to kill uh, Muslim terrorists. So the, so the idea of Islam is something that, to be stamped out. the whole history of these Orientalist representations, which, which portrayed the Muslim and the Orientalist as, in effect, a lesser breed. In other words, they're, the only thing they understand is the language of force. This is, this is the principle here, that unless you give them a bloody nose, they won't understand. We can't talk reason with them. Is the Arab world full of, of terrorists? Well, I mean, all you have to do is sort of break down the question into, into common sense and say, uh, there are terrorists, as there are everywhere. But, you know, there's a lot more going on there. I mean, we're talking about 250, 300 million people. And one of the great problems with Orientalism to begin with is these vast generalizations about Islam and the nature of Islam. I mean, there's very little uh, in common that you can talk about as Islam, let's say, between Indonesia and Saudi Arabia. They're, I mean, they're both Muslim countries, but, you know, the differences in history and language and uh, traditions and so on are so vast that the word Islam has, at best, a tenuous meaning. Um, the same is true within the Arab world. I mean, Morocco is very different from Saudi Arabia. Algeria is very different from Egypt. And I would argue, in fact, have argued, that the predominant uh, mood of the Arab world is very secular. Uh, you know, it's easy to attract attention, and certainly the media's attention, for some of the political reasons that are obvious. I mean, to discredit the Arabs, to make them seem like a threat to the West, uh, to keep uh, the idea around at the end of the Cold War that, you know, there are uh, foreign devils. Otherwise, what, what are we doing with this gigantic military, you know, uh, this huge military budget that is twice as much as the entire world's military budget combined. Uh, so you have to have threat. And the result is, uh, th it's very hard to find works that are sympathetic to the Arabs in Islam. Islam is seen as the enemy of Christianity, and the United States sees itself as a Christian or Judeo-Christian country in affiliation with Israel, and that Islam is the great enemy, the, the, the competitor. There's a, there's a history of that. And I give the example of Dodi Fayyad, you know, the uh, erstwhile uh, suitor of Princess Diana, 
Well, a few days before he died, I read through uh, the, the English press, and it was full of the racist cliches of Orientalist discourse. I mean, that this is w w the Sunday Times, the, one of the leading newspapers in England, had a headline to a 15,000-word story entitled, A Match Made in Mecca. And the idea of Muslim conspiracies trying to infect, you know, taking over this white woman by these dark people with Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, who is a, a, a historical personage of the seventh century, somehow stage managing the whole thing. That's the power of the discourse, you see. To th if you're thinking about people and Islam and about that part of the world, those are the words you constantly have to use. And you won't get hurt. I give you my word. The way you wacko! So discourse is a regulated system of producing knowledge within certain constraints, whereby certain rules have to be observed. Okay, Libya, exports. Yes, sir, you American pig. <laughs> nice touch. To think past it, to go beyond it, not to use it, is virtually impossible, because there's no knowledge that isn't codified in this way about that part of the world. May I help you? Listen to the sound Jesus. of our thoughts. And there's a certain sense in which in in not really mounting a serious critique of it, uh, the Arabs have participated and have and continue to allow themselves to be represented as Orientals in this Orientalist way. Um, there is no, for example, information policy of the 20 Arab countries, 22 Arab countries, uh, to try to give a different picture of what their worlds are like, because most of them are dictatorships. All of them are dictatorships without democracy, who are in desperate need of U.S. patronage, government patronage, to support them. And so they're not about to criticize the United States, uh, not about to engage in a, di a real dialogue. Uh, and, and in that respect, I think the Arabs keep themselves uh, collectively in a way that is, uh, that is subordinate to and, uh, and inferior to the West, and in fact fulfills the kinds of representations that most Westerners have in their minds about the Arabs. The attack came without warning, and according to a U.S. government source, told CBS News that it has Middle East terrorism written all over it. The attack in Oklahoma City appears to have a familiar mark. This was done with the attempt to inflict as many casualties as possible. That is a Middle Eastern trait. The fact that it was such a powerful bomb in Oklahoma City immediately drew investigators to consider deadly parallels that all have roots in the Middle East. ABC News has learned that the FBI has asked the U.S. military to provide up to 10 Arabic speakers to help in the investigation. Well, one of the interesting things about, about the persistence of Orientalism um, I mean, almost, when you think about it, almost astonishing persistence of it is, was the Oklahoma City bombing in, 90, in April of 1995. I, I can give you a personal example. I was in Canada giving some lectures at the, at the actual time of the bombing. And maybe half an hour after the event had occurred in the afternoon, my office was inundated with phone calls from the media. And... Oh, I rang my office from Canada, as I frequently do, to find out, you know, have, if there was any message for me that needed attention and so on. And she said every 25 calls had come in from the major networks, from the cable channels, from the major newspapers, news magazines, and so on and so forth, all of them wanting to talk to you. And I said, what about, about this event in Oklahoma City? And I said, but what, what does that have to do with anything? Well, apparently somebody had volunteered one of these instant commentators, that the notion that this seemed like a Middle East-style bombing and that there were a couple of swarthy people around right after the bombing, or seen after the bombing. Within hours of the explosion, local police and the FBI had issued the all-points bulletin looking for three men believed to be of Middle Eastern origin. And sources tell CBS News that unofficially, 
The FBI is treating this as a Middle Eastern related incident. Oklahoma City, I can tell you, is probably considered one of the largest centers of Islamic radical activity outside the Middle East. And so this got them to think that they should talk to me, not because I had anything to do with it, but because by virtue of being from the Middle East, I would have an inside uh, insight into this. You know, and of course the, pro the proposition is so preposterous and so racist that just if you're from the area, you would understand who and why this is being done. Never thinking for a moment that it was a local homegrown boy called McVeigh who was, you know, totally American in his outlook and was doing it out of the best principles of American extermination and Ahab-like anger, you know, at the world.